Good evening, Council. Uh, Jefferson DeRue. If we have to give pay increases to maintain integrity from our police and fire, we're going to go to that poor house a lot sooner than Mr. Rivers even mentioned. I think you have been completely dishonest with those you represent, Ms. Shoemaker, Mr. Wu, Ms. Fiado, and Mr. Castellanos, and I hope you're rewarded during elections. Thank you. Last final speaker, Angie Gillingham. Real quickly, Mayor, Council, Pro Tem. A few months ago, I came here to this dais and asked the appointed uh, council person to speak on the petition to raise our taxes and to get rid of the audit board. No need to ask. Item six is speaking for all of you. Nowhere in the MOU does it speak to the hiring of additional PD. I thought that's what some of you council people and the police department for several years have been asking for, safer streets to protect us all. The residents support the police and fire. That's not what this is about. I just wanted to start with a staff um, kind of highlighting the staff report on what this memorandum of understanding says and does. Through the chair, I'd be happy to give a brief report. I've got a very brief PowerPoint to go through the salient facts of this. This is a culmination of a meet and confer process. We will move ultimately, should there be additional revenue, come into the city to the position of third place. My goal would be number one. This doesn't get us there ultimately. It gets us to number three. We're going to adjust the pay ranges, the first pay period in January and then those raises would carry into the following fiscal year in the subsequent years the cost of that increase would be double what it is for half year this year so it would be 1.2 million it also does some things if we get additional revenue in excess of 4 million dollars it gives our officers a um, CPI adjustment for each of the three years they were out of contract in an amount which is less than what the CPI actually was. And it moves us to number three on the list, which um, would cost at current numbers about an additional 3.3%. Um, final point, this is a way to reward and thank our officers who keep us safe. With that, um, the chief, the finance director, and I are available for questions should you have any. Does the 600,000, uh, where is that calculation coming from? What does it include? We've got a spreadsheet. We put onto that spreadsheet every single officer at their current rate of pay mm -hmm. and with all of the benefits that are afforded under the collective bargaining agreement. The spreadsheet I saw, and maybe I'm just misremembering, um, shows the increase to the base pay, but I haven't seen anything that takes into account the overtime. The spreadsheet doesn't reflect it because we really don't know as we sit here tonight exactly what that overtime will be, but I think sitting here we all know there will be some. So it, it is true that overtime is not included in this calculation, and that's one of the things that we're trying to solve too. And quite frankly, the reason I didn't come out is because I wanted to see the buy-in from the police department and the fire department on this tax because ultimately, yes, they will be the main beneficiaries. You deserve this raise but we do not have the money to support it right now. 
I'm going to ask the chief to come down, if I may. Thank you. If you could explain the full process, including the new hires and the laterals, and how many we're recruiting well, in. Well, Thank the you. chief is coming down. I'd just like to share our perspective. I think recruitment is obviously important. Laterals can be a good technique, but this city has attempted to hire laterals who haven't passed muster, haven't been able to pass this city's high standards or the background test. Last year, we cut our overlap shift down to try to curtail overtime, which we were able to do. And yes, now we are below those numbers. The problem is, is I'm losing officers faster than I can um, get them in. So the process is very difficult. So we'll get, um, just to put it in perspective, we'll have a testing process where 100, 106 applicants will say, hey, I want a job. We'll put the testing out and maybe 50 will show up. And the reason is because these applicants that, that put in for jobs, they're putting in for jobs all over the, the, the county. And so when everyone's throwing the test, they just go wherever they feel uh, that they want to work. So of the 50 that we get, we send them to a process where we, we have certain questions and, and, and interviews that we send them to to make sure that they're worthy to be here. And of that, we may get 15 in the interview. Once the interview process takes place um, and we put them in backgrounds, uh, we may get two out of that that we can actually uh, either send to the academy and if it's a lateral, put them in training. And then they have to pass the training. Um, we refuse to lower the standards on training. We believe that uh, we have a very good uh, police department. We want to keep it that way. We do have, I think someone mentioned, we do have a few bodies that are in the process. Uh, one just started the academy, so we won't see him for a year and a half. Um, we have two that just finished the academy. Uh, they're still several months away, and we have a few more that are in backgrounds. Now, those individuals that are in backgrounds, there's no proven way to know that they're going to make it, but I am surely hopeful that they will. And I just want to say this. Back in 2008, we had 127 or 128 officers, and here in 2019, uh, we authorized 99, but we're down to 78. That's a pretty significant uh, uh, blow to the police department. Um, we, we have a very good culture here. Uh, uh, these guys are out recruiting uh, like crazy. We can get the officers in and um, get them trained up. Uh, I could not stand here today and tell you that by, you know, January we're going to have five plus officers. But now he is, I think, the concern by the resident. Okay, and the. But I think City Council too, regarding, okay, do we have this money? The, my tradition, my goal would be to have a budget with an operating margin of 5%. We're underfunded, we have a lot of unfunded liabilities. So far in this fiscal year, and we're three months in it, you've privatized building and safety, you've privatized city engineering, we're quickly gonna be in front of the audit and finance committee with updated numbers for pension obligation bonds because we're carrying $185 million worth of unfunded liability at 7% at CalPERS. I will support, okay, to, 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 to have uh, this MOU, to have this contract with our, okay, police, and we move from there, united to recruit us, and those, our staff, going to work so hard for us because they know they have been appreciated by our resident since we represent the resident. But if we can't show our police officers that we care about them, that we want to make it worthwhile for them. 
And the only way we can do that is by being able to afford them the living that they need to make. So, and this is one way for me to say thank you. I'm taking a leap of faith that we will have the finances to support this. Tonight, I will be supporting this. So if we have no other comments, uh, maybe we have um, a motion? Move the motion to approve. And I want to second it. So we have a motion and a second. We have a couple, please. Councilman Castellanos? Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viado? Aye. Councilmember Shoemaker? No. Mayor Pro Tem Wu? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Passes 4 1. West Covina, the city where you pay a whole lot more to get a whole lot less. <laughs>